I'll pick you up on something that you said in one of your one of your other presentations, which was that you were on the fence about whether what we do is engineering. Or, I, I, I pick up on Anita Sengupta as well. Is that is that it is uh, my argument is not that what we do is engineering. My argument is that it ought to be. So I, I think that when you do it, it works a lot better. And, and one of the things is that it doesn't mean that you're going to get perfect results. So so one of the things about you know to counter. Anita's uh, argument is that I can't remember the proportions now, but a huge proportion, I think a majority of Mars missions failed. That you know, that the, the thing was dest destroyed on entry. There's, you know, that's a really, really common failure because it's yes. bloody hard because you have to get it perfectly right first time. And uh, even with all of that focus on what could possibly go wrong, uh, just as a sidebar. I love Margaret Hamilton's thing, who wrote the flight control systems for the Apollo program. Yeah. And she talked about, you know, they focused all of the time on their system, how important it was for their systems to work, because it was what she called man rated, because if stuff went wrong, it killed people. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that idea of thinking about how can, whatever it is, whatever scale, how can this go wrong? And then you, in the engineering mindset is how do I mitigate or eliminate yes. that yes. that that cause of failure? Yes. And yeah. the other thing it seems to me is that we we have a huge advantage over physical engineering because we have complete control. We can we can decide. We can design our systems to be testable. We can design our systems to be more deterministic. We can experiment them on on them and try them out, and all of these things if we decide to do it. So I, I think it's that. That's my sorry. That's my <laughs> quick elevator pitch for en uh, engineering over craft. <laughs> I, I, yes. No. I mean, I, there's some really interesting things that the sparks just me really saying that in my head. Right. So, I mean, one of the one of the things about what we do, of course, is. You know, um, materials are more or less free, right? Yes. I mean, it, right. I mean, it's 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 it, unless until we're living in that science fiction Ian Banks culture yeah. future where matter is essentially matter, and you can just you know using a, a, a something like that we would think is magic, build a bridge, and then oh, I don't like that, just dissolve. Yeah. Build another bridge, dissolve. Yeah. Build another. That's yeah. that. You know, that's the. Well, you can't do that at the moment with this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. More physical time. Yeah. Whereas with us, we can. We can. I yeah. I mean, what I love about, I mean, it, one of the, I'm sure you've done this in the past as well, but one of the lovely things I used to do when I, I started pairing with someone new or someone, you know, maybe yeah. a grad or more junior person joining the team or you're working with a client who wasn't used to working in our really tight loops, you know, tight fiat yeah. cycle. Um, but which, I mean, you write a test, you write the code, test passes, commit onto, onto the mainline. Right? I mean, that's, that's, yeah. the, that's what I'm referring to there. Is also writing the test, writing some code and going, Oh, that's rubbish. Reverse. Yeah, yeah. Delete yeah. people, right? Yeah. And the, the looks in people. Are, what have you done? You've deleted the code. Yeah, it was, yeah. was going to work, was it? <laughs> yeah. And, <there's>, <laughs> yeah. and that's that's another. I, I talk about in another talk, or in one, another one of my talks on sort of touches on evolutionary architecture. That yeah. every line of code is an option, and either creates yeah. or, or collapses options in the future. And so, yeah. why should you follow knowingly follow a path that's going to leads to you collapsing your options in the future when yeah. actually what you can do is just especially and it oh i mean obviously it works if you're in small increments right yeah um, but that's what we i think we should be doing so yeah yeah, you know, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm sorry no no go ahead oh no i was just coming back to one of the things i was sort of saying in that talk about i mean i'm not really on the fence i think we are more you know if we do the things that we can that we do and that we know work then I think we're most of the way there, if I'm honest. Yeah. So build pipelines, which we have you and Jez and uh, your other collaborators in, in in the UK a long time ago to, to thank for. Um, you know, CI, um, you know, building a single artifact, it being it, it, it being, you know, uh, it, it being traceable to the commits that went to make that artifact. It moving through a, a build pipeline where it's tested for fast feedback initially, and then for more coverage later on in the build in the build pipeline. Um, having all the tools we've got now, Canary releasing, you know, blue green, all these things. This idea I talked about production isn't live. You know, you're not live until you're getting traffic. You can have 50 versions of a thing out there. Yeah. If only one of them is getting traffic, who cares, right? I mean, maybe it costs yeah. you money on your two account on your uh, AWS account. But also the stuff that was hard to change. Is now becoming easier. 
Yes. So where are we deploying? You know, there's a, in that talk, I talk, tell the story about building a, um, a science publishing site. And we realized who knew that um, having compute in the UK and data in the US was probably not going to work. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what was but what was the you know how, how do we how do we then make that change? Well, it was about three lines of code. Yes. In in our infrastructure as code, we used Terraform, about three lines of code. Yeah. And we stood up the entire new thing in the US and yeah. tore down the one. You know, that's that's a imagine that we, imagine if you'd build a built a data center. Or two exactly. data centers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, so, so you've got that. But then you've got also the stuff that, you know, um, Neil Ford and Rebecca Parsons and Pat Quar talked about, talk about a lot in evolutionary architecture, fitness functions. So, mm -hmm. you know, removing some of the constraints, the human constraints from things like change request boards or architecture review boards. You know, the architect says no, says no meeting that happens once a month. You yeah. know, and you can, can, let's put those in the code. Let's put those and run those as part of our build pipeline. Yeah. Let's put... Um, our software supply chain um, testing into the build pipeline. Let's put all it into the build pipeline. Let's do, yeah. let's do these things. And at, at a certain point, you've got a process, and, and we're writing tests right up front. We're guiding our design using tests. You know, going to be bug free, but defect free clearly. But you can, you know, I think we can all agree we get less defects if we, if we write lots of tests. Um, yeah. You know, all that stuff. I think when you put it in in aggregate. You know, to your, I mean, your brilliant book. Um, Thank yeah, you. I think, oh, it's <laughs> wonderful. It was a I'll, I'll movie. buy you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's not, it's not there. It's not there. Right. Along with my giant game design. Textbook. <laughs> Honestly, I was building the simulation. I was like, oh, I need to know a bit about game design now. So I ended up buying this textbook. And it's like this thick and crazy. I'm like, well, I'm going to finish it, and the last third is, is just about vectorization and about you know kind of not stalling your GPU pipeline. I'm like, I really need to know this. I don't know, but it's kind of you know. Um, yeah, but now yeah. you do. Yes, yeah, now I do exactly. It turns out, it turns out, games are really simple. There's a loop, and you call two methods: do yeah. stuff and do physics. Right? Do render, yeah, yeah. Physics and render. That's it. It's pretty much. Right? Yeah. <laughs> But I did learn a lot about some interesting techniques doing the simulator. So things like using some of the tools that um, game designers or game developers use for um, NPCs, AI, as we would say, mm -hmm. but things like behavior trees. They're really interesting, really yeah. interesting way of modeling finite state machines, which yeah. um, you know, I, 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 if I need a finite state machine in the future, I would probably reach for that yeah. because they're buggers to test finite state machines. Um, yeah. Behavior trees are really easy to test, and that's great. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah. I think looking at the time, we should probably start to wrap up. There's so many other things that we could talk about. So yeah. The stuff of yours that I've nicked that we haven't even covered, like the the, the difference between uh, the, the the Santa Fe Institute Institute oh. stuff about the directed graphs versus oh, yeah, uh, yeah. The meshes of uh, of interconnected systems. Yeah, beautiful yeah. stuff. We 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 must get together again sometime and talk about some of this stuff. But for now, thank you, James, so much for your time and for your insights. It's been an absolute pleasure. And for everybody that's watching, thank you for watching today. If you've enjoyed it, do give us some feedback and a thumbs up on your favourite um, uh, podcast platform, and like and subscribe if you're watching anything on YouTube. Thank you and bye bye.